da, da, da. Okay. Time for some fried chicken. I made a video before about fried chicken, but I had a few requests about a more complete part of the process. Now, what I'm going to do, I have some lard that I'm going to use for the very last time. And as you can see, it's a little darker. and Lard is white when it's new. Now, how do I know? I mean, it's still good, but see, when I put my finger into it, it leaves quite a soft dent. So, this is the last time that I'll use it for cooking. When the lard becomes soft, that means that it's sort of uh, breaking down. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I would assume that it's becoming more like oil and less like a solid, so it may be becoming unsaturated. I don't know the reason, but anyway, this is what I'm going to do. So I need to fry, but the pot I'm going to use is here, and this is the lard, and as you can see, lard, it doesn't really pour. Now it has been sitting out long enough from the refrigerator that the block should be already starting to melt a bit. So what we'll do, let's see if we can pop this out of here. Alright, so we're going to try to do that, but as you can see, it doesn't really want to go out. So we may have to just give it a little push. There we go. And that's it. So the lard is now ready to go into the pot and be turned into a cooking fat. Now obviously you can't deep fry something in a solid material. That's not the way it works. As you can see, I've gotten most of it out of there. I mean there may be a little bit that stays in the pan, but it doesn't matter. Actually this is a bowl. And you'll notice, I've had a few comments on this, the bowls that I use, like everything else, they tend to be metal, glass, or ceramic. I don't use plastic bowls to hold food. The only thing I use plastic containers for is like when I change the oil in my car or truck, or for some reason, um, you know, putting some plant material away, I may use a plastic container. But generally, for what I use, what I eat, it's always metal. So now, what we're going to do, we're going to put the fire on, we have plenty of gas, so I guess the gas production is back, and as you can see, the fire is in the back. Once in a while, you get like impurities in the gas, you get those little yellow flames, but that's okay. You want to make sure, though, that your backflow preventer is working, because if for some reason you have a drop in pressure, and, you know, maybe you have a little accident, the flame could go back to your digester and basically blow things up. But anyway, um, we're going to put this on here, and as you can see, it's already starting to melt. It tends to liquefy rather quickly. See? Very simple process. And again, all we need to make fried chicken is some heat, some fat, and some chicken. And as you can see, my hands are still covered with lard. Now, I don't worry too much about that because from what I've seen, the lard that you put on your hands doesn't do anything really bad. I was told many times that you would get acne or something like that from all that fat, but it doesn't seem to hurt anything. In fact, I actually use lard. For example, if I'm working on my car, working on the roof, it helps prevent the grease that you get from the engine from sticking in your fingernails. It also helps remove some of the grease that's already there. If you don't want greasy hands, you could use some alkali solution to wash it off. I'm just going to rinse it with water. But we talked about this before, washing soda. But you can actually use baking soda as well. Baking soda put on your hands with lard tends to wash it off. That's usually what I do. You see, it's still a little greasy, but not too bad. And speaking of washing soda, today is Monday, so I gotta do my laundry. And as you know, I don't use any 
really fancy laundry soaps. All I use typically is some homemade soap made with lard or tallow and I add some of this. I'll usually put a cup of this material into the washing machine. Where's my measuring cup? Oh, I seem to have lost it. Anyway, but yeah, that's what I'll do. And that will get my laundry clean. Very, very simple. Now, obviously, when it comes to laundry, I do laundry once a week. And what I will do, for some reason, if I don't, let's say I can't, I can't wash, I get really, really dirty, one day just covered in water or dirt or whatever, I'm sweating all day, I'm not going to throw the laundry into a nasty container and just let the thing decompose on its own. And this is something that I tell people. If you're going to maintain your laundry, you should wash as often as possible. Now, since I'm one person, I only wash once a week. But what I'll do, I'll take my laundry and I'll use some of this and I'll get typically a plastic container, although sometimes I'll just do it right on the stove. I have a laundry pot you can see right here, it's just another stainless steel pot. It's an old one somebody gave me that was burned up, has a couple of dents in it. And I'll put like whatever I was wearing into this pot and I'll add some washing soda to it, put water in there, turn the heat on, stir it up a little bit, and that helps break up any dirt or nastiness that can grow bacteria. Then what I'll do, I'll rinse it out with water and I'll hang it up outside. Now we have a lot of humidity here. I don't have a lot of sunlight. And a lot of times when I get home it's nighttime. So my secret weapon is this. I have an air conditioner that's by the back door. That air conditioner blows heat constantly. So I'll put the clothes on a hanger. I'll hang it on the outside of the air conditioner and let the air kind of blow around it. And by the morning those clothes are dry. Now they're not totally washed but they are cleaner. And then what I'll do, I'll put the clothes into the laundry basket after they're dry. Then, when it comes wash day, which is today, I will take everything that's in the laundry basket, put it into the washing machine along with the washing soda and some of the lard soap, and just let it wash. Then when it comes time to dry the clothes, if it's not a rainy day, of course it's been rainy lately, then I'll have to put it out, you know, outside if it's sunny. If it is a rainy day like now, I'll run the clothes dryer. But again, it's critical that you keep the clothes somewhat clean because if you don't, they're not going to last as long. And this seems intuitive, well, to some people. Some people say, well, the more you wash your clothes, the more they're going to wear out. And that may be true. But allowing your clothes to sit there with bacteria slowly digesting them is not good. And I found that using alkaline solutions like that really helps kill off a lot of the unpleasant bacteria, which by the way don't smell good either and your clothes get kind of old and dirty. You know, I wear a lot of these white undershirts and as you can see they do stay pretty white as long as you use the proper detergent. Now when it comes to higher end clothes like you would wear to go to a board meeting or something like that you have to be careful. You never want to mix the light and dark clothes because dyes and other things in the dark clothes can migrate over to the light clothes. So what I'll do with those clothes I don't wash those as often. So for example my suit I have a couple of suits they've never been washed and they're not dirty because I only put them on when I'm in an air-conditioned environment. I don't wear that stuff outside. As for the shirts, you know, the long sleeve dress shirts, those typically are white so they can be put separately and you can use whatever you want. Those never go into the clothes dryer. Those typically will be hung out on the line and a lot of times I'll do those over the air conditioner because there's an overhang over that and you don't have to worry about a bird pooping on the clothes. 
Ask me how I know. When you have as many trees as I do, bird poop is a constant battle. And if you don't watch it, it's going to end up on your clothes. The worst thing is when a duck flying across the yard decides to discharge a stream of poop. That actually happened to me. And thankfully, the duck didn't hit me directly. It hit my car and <laughs> actually almost flew into a friend of mine. It's a long story. But anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Now, as you can see, in the time that I've been wasting your time, the lard has completely melted. Now the question is, is it hot enough to fry? And that is pretty easy to figure out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get another container. Let's see if I have one here. There's a metal container. All right. So here we have some chicken we got from the Presidente supermarket yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and get this chicken ready to fry. Now, just put these are chicken legs. Again, I had to settle for this store-bought chicken because none of my chicken traps had any chicken in it. I think the chickens are getting smarter and they didn't want to avoid being caught. Because let me tell you something, there's nothing like feral chicken. Feral chicken is so flavorful. Oh, it's delicious. The only bad thing about feral chicken, it can be a little tough. But you know what? I actually don't feel as bad. I feel sorry for the store-bought chickens, as strange as that may seem, because I know that their life is not, not a very nice one. You know, I, I do feel bad for a lot of these animals. So if I could do my part, now if the stupid county didn't ban it, if it wasn't illegal with a $500 fine, I would have my own little flock of chickens. But, you know, Big Brother, Big Brother just can't resist ruining your life. They're good at that. All right, so here we have the chicken that I'm going to fry. All right. Now again, the chicken often comes with the skin pulled back. I like to stretch it out so that it's going to cover it up a little bit. It looks a little better. The skin of the chicken is actually extremely flavorful. Even though I don't really eat bacon, this would be sort of my version of bacon. All right. Now that's enough chicken to have a you know somewhat nice lunch. I bought a 10 pound bag for $5.80. I ate half of the bag yesterday. Now I'm gonna eat the other half today. So again, you can hear the oil starting to sizzle. Well, it's not really oil, it's actually lard, but we don't have to tell anybody that. So to know when it's ready, we're going to do a little test. But before we do that, I left out one of the most important things about stovetop frying. You need a grate. And this is going to keep the chicken from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Otherwise, remember, the fire is down here. So this is the hottest part. And then convection brings the heat up through the fat. Well, you need to put this down here to prevent sticking. If you put it like this, it'll raise it up higher, but then your chicken's not going to get enough lard. So I'm going to turn it upside down, leave these sticking up. Drop that in there. Now, let's see if it's ready. Now, there's a couple of drops of water. You can hear that popping. So we're going to go ahead and put the chicken in here. It's starting to sizzle, so that means it's ready. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put as much chicken as will fit in there and let it start cooking. Now, I don't think I'll be able to fit all of it in there, nor would I want to. So what I'll do, I'll just put in what I can, and then I will use the tongs because I don't want to put my fingers into hot lard, although I'm sure any of you vegans that are watching would laugh if I happened to burn myself. So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll stir up the chicken. It's starting to sizzle. All right. And that's really it. So. The chicken is sizzling. We're going to let that do its thing. Um, 
Oh. I'm out of sardines. Great. Oh well. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I have one sketchy looking sardine can left. A lot of times when I eat chicken, I like to have sardines along with it. As strange as that may seem. There's nothing like chicken and sardines. So what I'll do, I'll just let this chicken do its cooking, and then I'll come back and it'll be time to enjoy tasty, crunchy, fried chicken. No seed oils, just extremely unhealthy, heart attack inducing lard. And by the way, since this has been sitting here, you can see that the rest of the lard has sort of melted, so we can just dump that in there if we want. It's probably not necessary, there's plenty of lard. After I'm done with this chicken, what I'm going to do is take the lard and I'm going to put it back into a container and I'm going to use it as a hand cleaner. Now, I need to do some roof repairs. My roof is a disaster here. So I'm, I'll have to show you in a future video of how I use lard, believe it or not, to clean my hands from asphalt roof cement. Anyway, that's it for now. So I'll see you next time.